Hey guys, what is up? Bob here. Welcome to a new Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile. Today, we're going to be looking at Spellbook Wind Witches. So, you guys know Spellbooks, they're uh, pretty much my favorite archetype. And uh, Wind Witches are, a not new, but, um, you know, a, a spellcaster archetype. And they fit really well together. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and check out the deck that I, uh, I put together based off of them. Uh, now, this is a pretty linear, simple, um, you know, just kind of built built to be easy to run and kind of modular. You can uh, you can customize it in a couple of different ways. Like, you, it makes it, uh, siding pretty easy. That was kind of my idea for the deck. Uh, so, it's, it's pretty bare bones, but we're going to go ahead and check it out. You guys can see what it looks like, how it runs, all that stuff. And uh, judge for yourself if this is the sort of build you'd want to run, or if you'd want to run something a little bit more over the top and combo-tastic. Anyways, let's go ahead and start... So, of course, it is Spellbooks. We are going to be running three copies of a Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. He's pretty much your starter. Uh, well, in terms of your Spellbook engine, he's your starter. In terms of the Wind Witch engine, your starter is going to be three copies of Ice Bell. Uh, now, she's the pretty much the best one. She's the one who special summons herself, uh, immediately summons the other ones, and gets uh, all, all sorts of stuff. She also has a nice little burn effect that you can use to, to secure matches. It's almost a cowboy for game. I actually did uh, game somebody in a in a losing position where I just had one left and I just summoned her and burned for five. It was really nice. Next up, we are running three copies of, uh, what you call, Glass Bell. Uh, a lot of people say, like, oh, you can only run two. Uh, I run three because I want to have that option to search. She gives you field presence right in the beginning of the game. And obviously... If you have three, it's going to uh, increase your odds of being able to make like a second crystal wing or something later down the line. So running her at three is definitely, in my opinion, a good idea to, just because this deck needs a spellcaster on the field. Honestly, she's just pretty good, like in general. She gets you a search, she can you know, be used for like knowledge and stuff. You can you can just do a lot with her that doesn't necessarily have to be summoned off of uh, Ice Bell. So, uh, last but not least, two copies of Snowbell. Now, obviously, she's the uh, the bricky one, but the deck does uh, want to have that, that follow-up turn Crystal Wing play, so having two of this one is pretty important. And last for the monsters, one Max C. Now, obviously, this is pretty much just for, like, a local type of build. If you were going to take this to any sort of uh, larger scale event or anything, or even if your locals is a bit more competitive than mine, you'd want to add more hand traps. But uh, for this, just the Max C is pretty good. I side a couple others, but we won't be getting into that. Just, uh... Just to know that you can run like ghost ogres and all that stuff, um, but yeah, I just I just have the one maxi. It's pretty much a staple at this point. Uh, it's it's almost like uh, Rygeki or whatever. Anyway, that's it for the monsters. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, spells. So um, it is spell books. You are going to run th uh, three copies of the secrets, and of course this is uh, modern spell books. So you're going to be running three copies of knowledge. Now um, this is. Just so good. Like, honestly, this really did breathe new life into the Spellbook uh, archetype. Now, this is a little bit of a point of contention that uh, I, I know I've had with other Spellbook players, but in my opinion, this is the, the uh, optimal uh, way to run it. Uh, two copies of Crescent and three copies of Master. I did flip-flop that um, a, co a couple of times, actually. But I just love this card, um, just using Master over and over and over. Uh, you're banishing it all... Uh, you know, a bunch of copies of this a lot. You're just recycling them. Master is such a key combo piece in this deck that I would so much rather have it at three than uh, Crescent. And honestly, it just, it hasn't been a problem. This is just such a fantastic card. Early, middle, late game. You're always wanting to see Master. So having three of it is uh, definitely optimal in my opinion. So uh, that's, you know, that's those out of the way. So uh, engine stuff. Two copies of uh, the Grand Spellbook Tower. You're going to recycle all your spellbooks, get extra draws. It's fantastic. Two copies of Fate. Uh, three is a little bit cloggy, but two is definitely needed. Two copies of Eternity, just to get back all the stuff that you banish. And some one-ofs. We are running one copy of Life. Fantastic card, because you're filling up your graveyard with spellcasters a lot. And this can be used on, this, on the uh, Wind Witch Synchro. Get back, make some burn damage, knowledge away the life, and the thing does not die. Life does not kill it if it leaves the field, so that's pretty cool. Uh, wisdom, just make something immune to spells or traps. Power, bulk up your guys. And actually, last one, Star Hall. One of, I don't think I'd run more than one, but one of Star Hall is so fantastic. 
with this deck, like, just thanks to uh, the contributions that Knowledge makes, you're able to put, like, five or so counters on this turn one. And just being able to hit all of those, you know, like, get pretty much, like, ten counters turn two is so, so good. Because then you can hit, like, any of your Wind Witches, and they're very, very powerful, and you can attack with them and then make Crystal Wing. And it just gives your board so much more power. Honestly, like, this is one that I've just fallen in love with even more than I used to like it. Um, this is definitely a must-include. I, I I wouldn't make this deck and not run a Star Hall. One's good, but yeah, I wouldn't not run it. And then, last spell, Raigeki, obviously. It's, you know, it's Raigeki. So, for traps, we have Solemn Warning. I just always run the two strikes. You can run a third if you want. Uh, this was a little bit of a spicy tech, in my opinion. It, it actually, uh, it's come up a couple of times now at, at my locals. Uh, double Curse Seal of the Forbidden Spell. Um, this is just a really neat card that you can just catch a lot of opponents off guard with. Um, so Curse Seal, you flip it, discard a spell. Uh, like, for anybody who doesn't know. Discard a spell, negate the activation of an opponent's spell... And then and destroy it, and then your opponent can't activate spells with the same name for the rest of the game. Now, <laughs> there's a guy at my locals who runs Dark Magicians. You can hit like a Cosmo Town. You can hit uh, Dragonic Diagram. You can hit Spiral, whatever the field spell is, Resort uh, or Machine Dupe or something. This card hits so many things. Nothing like honestly, you just hit all sorts of really really powerful field spells or just general spells. Uh, anything that's like a three of, it's like, oh, let me just hit that, and it's just gone forever. This is a really cool card. Uh, now, it is a, a bit of a neg, but honestly, like, spellbooks make advantage so, so well, just because of stuff like Tower and whatnot, that it's not that big a deal, and just being able to instantly turn off an opponent's card for the rest of the game is so, so handy. And then my last trap card, and this might be a little bit of a weird choice to some of you, but I'm running one copy of Jar of Avarice. Now, why are we running a one of unsearchable whatever? So, reason for this, pretty much by turn two or three, your deck is going to be thinned down to about 20 cards, making the odds of drawing this actually pretty high, especially since you're drawing two cards per turn. Um, and this card is actually really, really good late game. It lets you put back an entire Wind Witch engine, uh, whatever the Wind Witch, what's the Wind Witch Synchro is called? Uh, Winter Bell and a Crystal Wing, you can immediately start making plays again. So this thing is just fantastic. You flip it, get all your Wind Witches back, your deck's live again. Uh, that is actually kind of the only downside to this deck is that you kind of run out of, of monsters a little bit quick, like especially if you're using all your Wind Witches and stuff. This alleviates that so, so well. You draw it so frequently just because you're thinning out your deck you're getting to your combo pieces they're all out of your deck and then you're just hitting your important trap card draws like jar of avarice so it's it's actually it's a lot more consistent than you'd think for a one of and in my opinion it's a really really good card so that's it for the uh the, the main deck for the extra deck this is pretty much like uh honestly if i was going to remake this um, and I, and I had the, uh, the, the specific cards that I would want to run in it. Uh, I would just load this up with all sorts of, um, Reaper targets. And I do actually have three copies of Reaper. I should do that. I'll probably do that later, but you guys know what the Reaper targets are. Uh, I'll show you what the important stuff is. Two copies of Winter Bell, burn damage, all that good stuff. Uh, and that actually can add up. Then one of these, uh, it's uh, a clear wing and then obviously two copies of crystal wing just such a fantastic card like this is also like you know pretty uh self-explanatory it's wind witches so you run this and then uh just some other stuff i run like a big eye uh, i forget why i had this it was like it, it came up that i had like uh i think i summoned one of these and then i like spell book a life to another one back knowledge joy the spell book of life and then overlaid or something it was it was a weird thing but i was like oh i'm glad i had that and then i just have some uh some rank twos that like, because you pretty much don't make rank 4s or 3s. So, I just have some of these. And some more of these. And uh, these are the important ones, actually. <laughs> and then downer to rank up on them. And then for the rank 4s, I did want to have a couple. And one of them came up against uh, Necroz, I think. Yeah, it was Necroz with Kaiju. So, uh, Utopia Package. And then a copy of Lightning Chidori. Chidori's just good. Like, it's anything that has wins can use it. So, um, 
Yeah, that's the uh, that's the that. Uh, like I said, I definitely drop some of these twos for like Reaper targets, maybe like an ABC Buster and like a Spiral guy. And I don't know what else is there that's like a good Reaper target. Dante, Dante is probably good. Like, well, no, wait, hold up. I always used to be like, oh yeah, Dante and everything. Um, whatever. What else is good? Like Drake didn't really have a target for it, but whatever. Um, you guys get the ideas. Like you just kind of run stuff. Um, but it's the important stuff is the synchros. Like that's the stuff that you actually make. So two of these, um, one of these and two of these. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the, uh, that's the deck. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I, I hope you also recognize this awesome light that I have. Let me, let me just show you something real quick. Boom. Oh, look how bright it is. Yeah, I like it. I like this light. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed. See you later. Bye.